So I'm going to give you a very, very brief intro on just some things to think about as you start. This is the really the start of the session. We start in the middle with architecture. And uh, let me first say I really enjoy hiking, uh, and I enjoy uh, uh, taking trips. And uh, this is a re remote place in New Zealand. You can see where the path goes up. But the strange thing is that, that wherever you go now, you're getting closer, and the, the, the electronic world is moving in. So even almost at the peak here, you have good uh, line of sight, and you can get a cell tower. And, and it's amazing to see people hiking up paths like this and looking down at their phones and either posting to Facebook or checking email when they have this to look at. So I am going to make the same recommendation to you, which is that you have two weeks, not quite here, of instruction, and you should not spend that time reading your email or doing IM or posting to Facebook. When you're in the room here, the people who have prepared their talks uh, you should be preparing questions. I mean, really hard questions for them, and uh, and taking notes uh, to the best of your ability. So really, take the time this week to dive in and 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 suck the marrow right out of this program. Take as much as possible out of the program. So we're going to do a very quick uh, review as we get started. Uh, you may have saw seen this picture yesterday. This is uh, the Avidac, which was the first computer that, that Argonne had, uh, 1953. This is Gene Hall uh, programming it. Of course, you program it with switches. And the reason I, I pull this up is that this is in 1953. And 30 years later, after this first computer, which is what the physics department had put together, uh, we have a computer science department <laughs> and, uh, at Argonne, so 30 years later. And if you look carefully at this picture, you should see at least one person in the room here uh, who was in that picture. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's kind of in the middle, uh, and he had a beard at the time. Uh, and uh, I think later, uh, we might see on the left, I don't know if you recognize uh, Jack Dungera. So he is someone who uh, um, is very well known in high performance computing, uh, was at Argonne at the time. And I think Rusty will be speaking uh, later this week. And so he's also in the picture right next to Jack. So 30 years later, a computer science department is born from that first computer. And then 30 years later, we continue. We have Summer Institute sponsored by NSF. And now, 30 years later, 2013, we have is the beginning, the launch of this uh, training program. And so Argonne is very dedicated and interested in computing and in uh, uh, the software and the hardware from the very beginning, from building machines and now uh, the kind of machine we have, Mira. And what I want to do uh, as we talk about architecture, this is uh, um, uh, one of the, found the founder of uh, IBM, Watson. And, uh, um, and he had a sign above his... Uh, study there that said think. This is a very famous uh, uh, picture and a very famous word, think, and it was then replicated in IBM all over the place. Um, and what I'm going to ask you to do, especially in the hardware session and the rest of the week, is think very, very carefully about your model, your model for the machine and your model for the software. So. One of the key things in computer science is that we create abstractions that match some model. And you might have a Newtonian model, uh, some sort of very simple model. And then you realize that in the edges, that model breaks. So we have things in our model, and especially as we talk about the hardware, that, that creates something that then you code to that makes the shape of the program. So an example is you might initially start out and you think, OK, memory is flat. I access memory. No matter where I access memory, it's the same speed. Well, of course, that's one model. And we know that that's not really how the world works. We have other things. We have NUMA. We have cache. The same thing is true for, for uh, power. The same thing is true for uh, data movement. And you'll hear from Pavan on interconnect. So spend some time as you're looking at your code and as you're thinking about uh, the future and how you write programs, understanding what your model for the machine is and where, where that model breaks. And so in all of the speakers today, 
ask yourself, and in fact, you could even ask the, the speakers that question, okay? What do we have, what do we hold in our head as the model, and then where does that model start to fall down? What are the, the ragged edges where, for example, there are places where caching does very poorly, right? And so that's where the model breaks, and that's where, as a programmer, writing code, you really need to understand that. So uh, I used to work at Los Alamos, and I worked for someone at the time named John Reinders, and he had this uh, uh, quote, uh, the average time required to implement a moderate-sized application on a parallel computer is equivalent to the half-life of the latest parallel computer, which means you spend about half your time working on the code, and then the only you get the last half of the life of the machine uh, to use it. So it's very important that as you work this week and as you look at the hardware, that you get the abstractions that let you not just implement to the hardware, but you're creating a framework, a portable framework that for several generations of machines is, uh, is, uh, is useful to you. So with that, I'm going to wrap up with just a, a couple slides. These are my recommendations for this week. So you look at this week and the hardware and the software talks. We're first, we're going to start with uh, OPM, <laughs> OPM, other people's math libraries. It is surprising how many times people decide that they are going to write a dense matrix uh, uh, loop or a sparse matrix uh, uh, solver or something when really they could use someone else's fantastically optimized math library. Not just math, but all libraries. So start with that. Make sure you have that in your code recommendation. Figure out how to encapsulate your parallelism and your messaging in I.O. And hopefully later this week you'll hear more about encapsulation. You already know a little bit about it. But really struggle with how to keep your model for your parallel program such that you can change how parallelism is expressed and you can change the back end on how that's put to the machine. The same for messaging and I.O. It's also, when you start a program, there are little things that you have to start adding as your, as your uh, uh, code base grows. And embedding those capabilities from the very beginning is very important. Debugging, performance monitoring, correctness, correctness detection, and resilience. These are all things that when you first write that little 30-line kernel, that's fine. But then as you start to evolve that into a framework, these things have to be embedded. So spend this time this week looking at all the different talks. You'll hear a talk on, on, embed, on tools. Uh, you hear, you'll hear a talk on uh, performance uh, tools uh, and on debugging and so forth. Figure out how you embed that into your framework. So at the very beginning, everything is in. There are two kinds of workflows, the workflow of the science and the workflow of the programmer. Understanding these two workflows and how they interact is key to being able to sustain a large project, a large uh, code base. Also, it's very worthwhile to invest in automation, uh, from the build system and nightly tests uh, um, on to versioning and including metadata uh, in, your, in your source code so that you can run one of these source code tools and extract information about your program. This is all extremely worthwhile to invest. Uh, and then, of course, there's the larger community. So with that, I'll point out some things, again, in this investment space. So things that are trending up as we look over the last couple years in hardware uh, and in software, asynchronous uh, behavior and the need for latency hiding is, come, is trending up. So as you look at your code, these are important things to invest in. Block synchronous is kind of trending down. And in my talk this evening at dinner, I'll talk about why. Uh, over decomposition and load balancing, again, to help with that uh, asynchrony uh, trending up. Massive parallelism rather than countable parallelism, where you select, I have P processors, and therefore my work will be divided by P. That's countable. Uh, um, hierarchical memory instead of flat memory. Again, this abstraction of this model abstraction of flat. Uh, very expensive data movement is what is trending up, sadly. <laughs> it means that every distance that you move your data is a cost. And uh, being able to understand that and, again, have that in your model for how a computer works uh, is important. These sort of, uh, uh, the opposite of that are, was in the uh, long ago, years ago, were expensive flops 
where people worried most about counting flops and how to reduce flops. Now we have algorithms that increase flops and reduce data movement, reduce uh, moving data off or uh, to memory. A fault and resilience strategy, instead of just checkpoint restart, uh, there are a lot of new algorithms and new uh, techniques for finding out how to move part of the data to nearby nodes, uh, to use other advanced strategies for resilience rather than just sort of checkpoint the entire machine. And finally, looking at uh, and analyzing some of your data while it's still in the computer in situ, rather than sloshing it back to the file system and then sloshing it back into the computer. Can you do any of that analysis, any of that uh, computation on the output data right there in the computer? So with that, uh, this after, well, I guess this morning and then part of this afternoon, we'll be diving into both the messaging uh, and the uh, um, hardware, uh, how chips work, uh, GPUs, uh, CPUs, uh, um, and then later we'll be going into uh, uh, message passing. So uh, with that, I think we have a minute or two if there are any questions. Remember one of my first charges was come up with good questions. You can tell more from questions than, than from answers, right? Thank you.